praise today. Come on, let's give God some praise today, church. Hallelujah. Are you guys excited to be in the house of God today? Well, we're going to get things started off with some baptisms this morning. Amen? So you guys may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm up here, folks. Right up here. There we go. You guys are looking for me. I hear a voice. He's right up here. Hey, good seeing you guys. I tell you what, you sit down too quickly, so I want you guys to greet one another. There's still some out in the lobby. Uh, they don't realize, guys, you've got to be here early in your seats or you're going to miss something. We're about to have some baptisms. Can I hear an amen? This is exciting, folks. This is the exciting part of being a pastor is not only celebrating a life that's been changed, but also that proclamation, which is what a baptism is, church. And we're excited any time we get an opportunity to do that. So would you guys stand to your feet? We're trying to get things ready up here. I want you guys, we're going to get an opportunity for those in the lobby to come on in. And so i tell you what, guys, grab, find about six people and uh, give them a holy hug or a handshake, guys, and greet one another. Amen. Amen. Well, hopefully you found a seat. There's still some are coming, and so you guys may be seated. Today is going to be one of those days that's going to be an all-day celebration. After all, that's why we come to church anyway, to celebrate. Amen. Um, but we're going to have baptisms actually twice. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to have one now. And towards the end of service and wrapping up the service today, Pastor Andrew has got some young people that he's going to be baptizing. What an opportunity, what a privilege, and what an honor that is as well. So we're excited to just have an all day of celebration. Amen, church? And so we're going to start right off, and I'm excited and honored myself to be able to be a part of this experience with this young lady because I know I've been a part of several highlights and high points in her life in, in, uh, in the spiritual realm. It's awesome to be able to see a life that's been changed and transform she and her husband and uh, Kaylee Love. Would you come on down? And I've been a part to, uh, of the. Yeah, come on, let's give her a hand. The water. I mean, baptism. Sorry, literally take your breath away more than one way. And uh, and so I'm really proud to be a part of this life. Like I so said, we saw this couple, and I got to be a part of this couple's life in marriage. And we just dedicated second child last week. And uh, be able, but to me, this is a, a very, very important highlight in her life. Amen, church. You agree with that? And I'll be able to make a public. Ah, come on, let's give up. Let's give God praise for that. <laughs> to give a, a, a public proclamation of telling the world that I, I am alive has been changed, and you can't beat you can't beat this, folks. And so, I, I promise you, I'm not going to make her talk. But I just have one question, Kaylee, and I kind of already know the answer to this, but I want you to just tell people just yes or no. You have accepted. Christ as your personal Savior, you live for him every day. You can say yes, yes. Okay. Well, come on this way. Yep, yep, yep. Because your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hey Amen. Let's stand our feet today. Let's open with a word of scripture this morning. Can we do that, amen? You guys come expecting God to do some great things? Psalms 24, the, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the Lord and all who live in it. For he founded it up, upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend from the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? He who 
has cleansed his hands with a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear to what is false. He will receive blessings from the Lord, and, the, and God is his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your hands, O gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors. The king of glory may come in. Who is he? The, this king of glory, the Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. Amen? Amen. Father in heaven, we worship you today. And God, we come to this place expecting you, God, just to, to show up in this place. God, we know that you're here. Lord, we just ask, Lord, as we enter time of worship, God, that you'd be glorified among, amongst all other things, God. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come sing it out. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Come on, sing it. Bless the Lord. We sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul.
Come on, church, let's lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Whatever that looks like to you, just lift the name of Jesus up in this place. Lord, you're our provider, God. Lord, you're our healer, Father. You're our salvation. God, we stand here today. God, we bless your name today, God. Oh, we worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We sing on that day when my strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship. today, God, we've come to this place to lift your name on high. God, to bring praise and glory and honor to your name. Come on, lift up this old chorus. Jesus. Jesus. Holy and holy.
we love him today. Father, we love you in this place, Jesus. Father, we worship you in this place, God. We sing it, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power.
That's right, come on, let's give the Lord some praise today. Come on, across this place, let's lift up our voices. We love us, Jesus, of you, God. Father, we worship you in this place, God. Lord, we give you the highest praise in this place, God. Father, we worship you, Jesus. God, we thank you, God, that we can come to this place and enter into the holies of holies. God, we don't just come to this place, God, to sing melodies and songs to you, God, but we come to enter into your presence because, God, when we enter in your presence, God, we leave changed, God. We leave never the same. And, Father, I ask, God, that as we, God, move on to the rest of the time of the service, Lord, that you would just, God, that you would speak to us. God, that you would speak to us so clearly, God. God, that you would keep this atmosphere of worship in this place. Come on, one more time. Sing, I'm a lover. I'm a lover of your presence. 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 There's a line in the song that just simply says, I was made for love. And I think sometimes we forget that in the struggle and the striving and the day to day and the pursuit. And that we just forget that God made us to receive his love. And I don't want to rush past this this morning because I think God still wants to do something in our hearts today. So I'm just going to ask all across this room, if you just close your eyes and lift your hands towards heaven. And can we just sing that out, sing as they lead us, 
I was made for love. And would you just receive the love of God this morning? Forget about all the struggles. Forget about all the striving. Know that if you ask, he's forgiven you of that sin that's in your mind and that's kept you from his presence this morning. And just receive his love this morning. Let God love on you. Come on, let's sing it together. Sing it, I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving you. Oh, I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving. Just your voices. You sing it, I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving you. Oh, I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for you. Come on, let it bring joy to your heart this morning. Let it bring a smile to your face. God, we were made for love. We were made just to be loved on by you. God, we were made to be in your presence, to let your presence saturate our lives, God, and to be showered with your love and affection. God, so often we lose sight of that. We I think it's all about what we do and how we can get where we need to get to. But God, your grace is simply that, that we are objects of your love and affection. God, we don't earn it. God, in the same way we don't earn it, God, we don't, God, do anything that could lose it either, God, because your love is so strong for us. And you love us no matter what. God, this morning we just bask in your presence, God. We smile with joy knowing that we are the objects of heaven's affection. God, there's nothing that can separate us from your love. You're so mighty, God. You're so wonderful. You're so good to us. And if that's your prayer this morning, can you just say amen, amen, amen. Man, what an awesome time worshiping God this morning. I'm going to invite you to be seated today as we continue on and this just attitude and spirit of worship as we move forward in service today. And what a great God we serve and what a man great time to come in and worship together this morning and, and it's just what an awesome day it's been already and we're, we're not even done. So we look forward to seeing what God's going to continue to do through the rest of this service but before we do that, man, I just want to say welcome to you. If you're here this morning as our guest, and maybe you're here and this is your very first time at Longview First Assembly, or maybe it's your first time in a long time, you're our guest, and we just want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning, and uh, we just want you to know that we love that you're here, and we hope that you feel the love of God and uh, in this place today. If that is you, you know, we just want to ask that you do us a small favor, uh, nothing big really, but if you would, and everybody else is going to be doing the same thing, so it's, it's not a uh, real big deal at all, but if everyone would just reach into that seat pocket in front of you and grab a care and communication card and begin to fill that out, especially if you're our guest this morning, uh, but everybody does that every single week. Fill that out and let us know that you were here in just a second uh, when you have that filled out, when the offering plate comes by. You'll just simply drop that in the offering this morning. 
um, let us know that you are here today. As you do that, you'll find there's some opportunities on there to, to ask some more uh, about the church or how you can get plugged in. Maybe any questions you have about Longview First Assembly or how we can serve you or your family. And feel free to write that in on there and we'll get in touch with you and, uh, and let you know the answer to your questions on that. So thanks for doing that. Everybody else, and fill those out and continue to let us know how we can uh, worship with you and just praise God for what he's doing in your life and in your family, uh, but also how we can partner together as a staff with you in prayer. And we do that every single week and love the opportunity and privilege to do that. Well, while you're doing that, and while you're also preparing uh, your morning tithe and offering, I want to let you know about something that's coming up really soon. In fact, at the end of this month, we'll be doing our annual neighborhood block parties. And some of you, man, you're like, sweet, cool, I'm ready to sign up. You can do that on your current communication card right now. Just put NBP or neighborhood block parties or just block parties, whatever you feel like writing on there this morning. And that's how we'll know that you're signing up to volunteer for those. But some of you, you don't even really know what that is because you, you've never been a part of them. It's simply this, man, on October 31st, our community comes out in mass. And they come out for one thing, it's called sugar. And, uh, and the parents, man, they love it because they get the good stuff and the kids get the jawbreakers and all that. Uh, but our community comes out in search of candy. And so we like to meet our community. God has called us to make an impact in our community, to reach our community with the love of Jesus Christ. And so here's what we do on October 31st at, at four different locations around our community, possibly five, at five different locations around our community. We're going to set up. Uh, a festival in people's front yards. And so we get the bounce houses and big light towers and lots of candy and games. And so as kids are coming through the neighborhood, man, they're, they're knocking on doors going, hey, can I have some Tootsie Rolls? And they're getting a few Tootsie Rolls. And then they show up at this house, they're going, wow. And just all the fun, all the stuff. And, and here's the cool part is they walk onto that lawn, they walk onto that yard. There's loving people from Longview First Assembly. They're welcoming them, saying, hey, come play this game. Hey, here's a handful of candy. Hey, come do this. And just loving on these families in our community as they're coming. And, and people always, always have this question, why are y'all doing this? And we say, because we love you and because we uh, want to serve you and your family. And it's so cool. It's so awesome. It's one of my favorite outreaches that we do all year long. And so uh, next week, man, we're going to have something for you, man, where you can just strategically partner with us for neighborhood block parties. But we wanted to let you know that they're coming up so that you can begin to plan. October 31st this year, it's on a Wednesday night. And so obviously we won't have services that night because we will be out serving our community. And it's going to be an incredible incredible time. So I want to let you know that that is coming and it's going to be awesome. So if our ushers will come uh, and prepare to wait on you this morning, will you join your hearts in prayer with me as uh, we come to this time of giving our offerings today and our returning our tithe to him today. Let's pray together. God, man, you're so awesome and you're doing so many great things in our midst. Lord, I was just worshiping you and thanking you for the changed lives, God, that we're seeing on a regular basis here at Longview First Assembly. And God, as we approach this outreach opportunity at the end of the month, God, I pray again for more changed lives. God, that you would use this church, these people in this room right now, God, to make a difference in someone's life a month from now as we extend our hands to love our community, to show them the love of you, God, that we just so uh, awesomely experienced a few moments ago. And Lord, as we give our offerings and our tithe this morning, I pray that you bless those, God, who are obedient and faithful in their giving. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
praise the Lord. Can we give appreciation to our worship team? And uh, what a great job they've done this morning. Very proud moment for me as a, as a dad, not just a pastor, to see your daughter up there worshiping. Amen. God, I, I wouldn't trade that for the world. And uh, so it's kind of hard to worship, I guess, when you're staring at your little girl going, way to go, Gabby. Uh, so I'm glad you guys worship. I was a little distracted, but I did, I did get my worship in, and God gave, gave God praise. But thank you guys for being here today, and, and uh, man, I'm just excited to be here, folks. Aren't you? Uh, I really am. I mean, what a beautiful weekend, and uh, you're saying it's rainy. That's exactly it. It's beautiful because God brought the rain, and uh, we absolutely needed it. And I just I really stood outside many times and just thanked God, and, and I guess there's so much spiritual implication just seeing God just rain on us, and I just pray that through the Holy Spirit, he'll do the same for us here today. He has a word for us, and it's our job, I guess, to open up our hearts and our minds and receive the word that God has for us. I mean, you, you cannot, no excuses, and it has nothing to do with the messenger, but the message in itself is powerful. Anytime we get to dig into God's word, folks, that's, it's life-changing if you allow it. Amen? Um, before we get into God's word, there's several items of business I do need to talk about, so I'll get to the message part of it uh, eventually, um, but a few things we need to talk about, and I just, I'm still celebrating this past Sunday, last week was an incredible day, wasn't it church? I mean, it was, uh, it, it was truly life-changing for, for so many people, and obviously we saw uh, an, an instant change in people's lives, and, and when you speak about forgiveness, and what a very, very heavy subject, uh, emotionally already, isn't it church? But, but to hear that testimony, and and to see lives and to hear lives that were changed during service, after service, but even throughout this week, I know that God moved on many, many people. And man, I can't, I'm not really allowed to share uh, publicly, but can I tell you that a lot of lives have been changed because of that. And um, I, when I'm saying that for a reason, uh, I am, I'm celebrating that, but I also wanted to, to tell you that um, many have mentioned, can I get a CD or a DVD or can I get a copy of the service? And we're working on that, but until... That happens. Can I, can I just say to you guys, I'm going to point you to our website. Go to that and point them that direction. I mean, because don't wait around for a DVD or, or a CD to come out and put it in your hands. I'm telling you right now, go straight to the website. Point your friend or relative or whoever it is. Because I've had, I've had emails already come in saying, Pastor, I, that blessed me, but I want to share that with so many people because I know there's many that need it. Amen, church? And so can I tell you right now, if they have means for technology, have a computer, get access to one, send them there, send them the link. We can forward you guys the link, go on our website, whatever it takes, but they can watch that now. Don't wait around for that. I want you to, to tell you guys already, point them to that direction and just say, man, you've got to listen to this story. Amen, church? So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. You can do that now. You don't have to wait around for that. Um, Many other things, too. Did you guys receive a bulletin? Hopefully you did. Can you guys get those and wave them in the air? So I know you guys have them. A lot of, there's a wealth of information on those things. If you can flip that over really quick before you get to the notes, I want to draw your attention to a few things. I, I, I really don't like to do this because it feels like I'm giving you guys a commercial, but I, I want to talk about a few things, some opportunities that, that, that we have here within our fellowship. And I love this church. I don't get paid just to say that. I absolutely love this church, I love what, what we do, I love what we get to do. And anytime we get to engage our community, whether it be by an outreach or serving the community, I'm all about it, and I know many, many of you guys are too. Uh, a couple years ago, we did a thing called Be the Church. If you guys remember, we invaded Stanford Park and changed that park, and many guys who grew up in Longview said, well, you haven't seen this park this nice in a long time, and we had a part in doing it. And I've driven by that park many times this last couple of years, and just, just saying, man, what a, what a great thing. This was one opportunity we had, and so we as a church came together and served the city of Longview. We have another opportunity this Saturday. Uh, this coming Saturday, October the 6th, we are partnering with the city of Longview. Again, it's already a set day. You might have seen signs throughout the city. If you drive around the city, you'll see little yard signs that, that talks about Longview Cleanup Day. And I called the city and told them I, the same contact. I called uh, her and I said, listen, here we are. Here's Longview First Assembly. Do you remember me? Said, of course we do. We still talk about you guys. And I was like, well, we want to partner with you guys again. What can we do? And they are already excited because they saw what we did last time. They're like, man, you guys are ready to join us again. I was like, absolutely. So I just, I just told her, put us wherever you need us. But we, we are a church that's just here to serve our city. You guys excited about that? Amen, guys. We get a chance to serve our city. That's awesome. We're talking about love. We're talking about loving one another. That's that's a 
That's the best display of loving one another, not just here, but we get a chance to show the world and show this city that we love and value what they do and what this city represents. And we get to be a part of that. So I'm just telling you right now, we're going to meet at the city library at 830. They're providing even breakfast for us. They're providing all the tools, gloves, everything that we can possibly need to serve this city, whether it's just we might just be picking up trash. We might be raking. I'm not really sure. What we're going to be doing, it won't be anything beyond my skill level, so I know everyone can do it. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, if I can do it, anybody can. So, um, but there might be some other things, some opportunities. If, there's one, if there are specific projects, I'll email you or call some of you guys personally who are skilled in those areas. I'll let you know, hey, we need this or we need that, and you guys can come prepared with tools and your talents to serve this city. But I'm excited about the opportunity, so guys, we're just going to meet out there. Instead of meeting here and, and busing everybody, we're just going to meet at the city library at 830. They'll give us directions. They'll give us our projects, give us the locations, and we'll hop in our cars and we'll go. It's a blue shirt event, so if you have your blue shirt still, some of you guys kept yours as a permanent resident in your house. That's okay. If you guys have that, wear your blue shirts or come by the office. We'll supply you with one. But it's so awesome to see a sea of blue of LFA, LFAers. Is that a word? Uh, LFAers out there just serving God. Amen. So. Um, I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are too. Along with your bulletin, something else, guys. I'm telling you, there's a lot I got to talk about. I'm sorry for you getting to the message. But uh, Pastor's Appreciation Month is in October. That's normally a month we set aside, the, well, at least our nation sets aside for Pastor Appreciation. But we do something a little bit different here. And uh, this church, we, we chose to spread that out throughout the year. And we celebrated Pastor's birthday. And that's your way of expressing your love and appreciation to the pastors on staff. This coming Sunday is going to be our Appreciation Sunday for our youth pastors. Amen? And, uh, amen. Okay, I was hoping you guys get after that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, come on, let's give it up for them, guys. You don't want to miss next Sunday. It's going to be your opportunity to really get after it and bless our youth pastors and show your appreciation. Even if you don't have kids in the youth department, I, I guarantee you're, you're, going to, you're, you're blessed. By their ministry because they give so much and the fact that they're uh, helping to, to, to bless our, our, our youth and our generation folks, that's exciting, isn't it? And we want to be able to bless that. So you get an opportunity to do that next Sunday. It's Pastor Appreciation for the Burrs, for Andrew and Angela, and we're so thankful for that. So I'm just kind of letting you guys know what's going on there. Also, guys, we had an awesome prayer meeting this past Wednesday. It was incredible. Um, far, I mean, I don't, even know, I don't even know what expectations I had other than it exceeded whatever expectations I did have incredible time around this sanctuary. We literally filled the entire sanctuary up with just earnest, God-inspired, God-breathed, Holy Spirit-breathed prayer. It was awesome, folks. It was incredible. And I'm saying that to say you don't want to miss the next one. We're going to continue to set aside the fourth Wednesday of every month for prayer. Alongside with that, we've also resurrected, if you will, the intercessory prayer groups. And if you're in an intercessory prayer and you're available during the days and also on Wednesday evenings, you want to be a part of that. I'm telling you, church, if we're going to continue to move forward, I'll say it again. If we're going to move forward as a church, forward as a church, we've got to pray. I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to say that. You can get all the preaching and sermons you want, the teachings you want from your favorite Sunday school teacher. That, it, it, unless we are praying, that's for not. I'm going to tell you that right now. If we're not going to pray as a church, then we're really not going anywhere. We're just spinning our wheels. And not, I'm not about spinning wheels. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not about that. I want to move forward and see this entire world be changed. And I want to say, God, use me. If I can be your hand extended, I want to get on my knees and pray for revival, pray for needs. Why am I saying that? Because I also want to celebrate. While we have some needs, some very powerful needs that are in our church, many, like I say, so many are sick in body. And there's cancer reports left and right. But you know what? God's an overcoming God. And we can overcome cancer even. And I know even some today uh, have received reports of cancer, but I know that God's going to heal. Uh, and he's in a healing bed. The reason I'm saying that is because we have, I want to celebrate. Debbie, can you just raise your left hand? Because I know that's the hand. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to tell you why that's significant. I want to celebrate this because I know that tw for 20 years now, she wasn't even able to do that. And I know that this past Tuesday at the Women's Fellowship, I don't know if you guys even know about that or not. Uh, awesome, awesome ministry. If you're missing, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that either. Uh, because healing's coming out of it. I mean, in a Women's Fellowship, she came out of it saying, I haven't been able, in, in all my years of cutting hair, I haven't been able to do it pain-free and even worship. And she said, the first thing I did was worship my left hand. I said, well, that's all right. God loves left-handers. Uh, and that's, that's incredible healing, guys. I'm telling you. So I celebrate that. Thank you for sharing that. And um, 
That's what it's all about, isn't it, folks? That's what it's all about. That's why we come together and say, God, we worship you. We praise you. We ask for things. And when God comes through and does it, we celebrate that. And uh, so that's just amazing. Thank you, Debbie. Let me pick on you this morning. But uh, you had to, we had to share that. That was awesome. So are you guys ready? Let's get into God's word. Can you say amen? amen. Enough commercial time for Edgar. I, this is what I really like to do up here is be able to share God's word. And we've been in the middle of a series. And this is the last installment last week of loving one another. I, I really have enjoyed this series. It's been challenging for me to be able to go through God's word and just hear his word, hear his word personally in my life. And it even challenged me in some areas that are very uncomfortable areas that I didn't want to be challenged by, to be honest with you. They got a little hot and sweaty type thing going, I don't want to hear this stuff. This is, I don't want, God, don't challenge me. But he did. And, uh, and, and it's been a powerful, powerful series. And today we're going to do something that's not talked about a lot, to be honest with you. And that's speaking the truth in love. You guys ready for that? It's, it's speaking the truth in love. We're going to cover the, the what, the how, the why. We're going to talk about all that. And we're going to leave you with a practical word of even when you leave this place today, how to even practice speaking the truth in love. And, and it's not talked about a lot in church because it gets uncomfortable. Who wants to... Go out and do that. I'd rather just sit in my own bubble and worship God, do my thing, be a member of a church and I have to say a word. But folks, if we're really a loving, supernatural community, this is something that needs to be practiced. Can you say amen? And I'll tell you today, some of you guys are going to be set free. I'm saying that already. I'm uh, speaking that in faith. Some of you are going to be set free to actually put this into practice and see this supernatural community truly come to life. Can you say amen? So we're going to go ahead and get started. Your text today, is, we're going to go out of Romans chapter 15, verse 14. Romans 15, 14. And I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version today. A little bit different version than I'm used to reading out of. I just like the wording in this. And uh, I, I just think, I think you're going to be blessed. Romans 15, 14. Uh, whatever version you, you, you choose to have. And if you have U version, you can look in your devices and follow right along. If you do have your bulletins, go back to your bulletins again. The other side of the commercial I just share with you, there's some notes so you guys are able to follow along. Romans 15, 14 says, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you are all full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, also to be able also to admonish one another. Let me read that again. Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Admonish is the word we're going to camp ourselves on here today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for this church. I thank you for my friends. I thank you for this church family that, that is and, and quickly became my family. I'm, I, I love them today, God. I expect the best, Lord God, and I know that's what you expect from us here today. Lord, I know it's, uh, it gets uncomfortable at times, Lord God, to speak the truth in love. And here today, I'm, procra I'm procla proclaiming the truth in love, and it gets uncomfortable. But Lord, it's, it's, it's the friction that causes us to grow, Lord, and that's what I'm praying for today. Lord, that, that friction, Lord God, that, that, uh, Lord, it, kind of, it might make us uncomfortable, Lord, but we need to hear it. We want to hear it. We desire your word today, God, and I pray this word would just pierce our hearts here today, God change the way we move, the way we breathe, the way we live. We want to leave this place today changed. Hallelujah. We ask this in your name. Everybody said, amen, amen. Let me, have a, uh, let, let, me, let me start off with this question for you first is, do you, have, do you have that friend or the friend in your life that loves you enough, okay, they'll love you enough to tell you things about your life that no one else cared to say? Okay, you don't have to answer, don't raise your hand, don't point them out to me, anything like that. I just wanted you to kind of throw that question out there. Do you have that friend, I'm talking about that friend, that'll love you enough, that'll tell you things that you need to hear and maybe others care not enough to really say to you? And, and that's, that's the gist of where we're going with today because when we have a true, supernatural, loving community, we're, we have a church that's full of Admonishment. Can you guys say amen to that? And that's what we're talking about is, is admonishing. And, and there's four areas, at least specifically for me, these are the four areas that, and the friends that I have, and, and, and listen, I do call them friends, and they do come sometimes come to me with some very difficult issues and questions, and in my accountability, they ask the tough questions, and now sometimes I'll hang up on them, but then I got to call them back. 
and say, I don't want to, he, well, who, how dare you ask me that question? But they have to. If they love me that much, they will. And here's the areas I've found that are very, very important as far as admonishing. There's relationships and character. In my case, it's ministry, but it could be ministry, career, job, however that fits in your, in your case, and also your giftedness. Your giftedness. And you have one that they'll, they'll ask you the tough questions or, or talk to you, admonish you in these areas when it comes to these areas in your life. And so we're going to talk about first the what. And in your notes, if you have version, I've already given the definition for you. Maybe some of you guys, if it's not in your notes, you guys can write this down. But what is admonishing? And admonishing is this, to exert influence upon another by life and word. Let's, let's say that first. To exert influence upon another by life and and word, and what I mean by word is capital letters word. This is the word of God. Can you say amen? To guide him and her into obedience of God's will as scriptures, as revealed in scriptures. That's what it's about. That's what admonishing is. To exert influence upon another by life and word. To guide him or her into obedience of God's will as revealed in scriptures. So that's the what, the why. Why do we need to admonish one another? If I, I much rather be comfortable. This is something I really don't want to do. But really, God, God does want us to do this. If we're going to exist as a supernatural community, and we talked about that the first week of loving one another, is that's what church is, is a supernatural community with a common origin and a common agenda. And if we're going to flow in that and, and be an impact in this world, we need to ask the questions, why? Why do I need to admonish one another? Here's four reasons. If you guys are with me, say amen. In your notes, you can write these down. Number one is, it is a command. In your notes, it's a command. Colossians 3, 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs of gratitude in your hearts to God. First and foremost, we have to say, guys, it is a command. God wants us, needs us, commands us to admonish one another, to, to bring correction at times, to ask those tough questions, to have those tough conversations at times. He commands us to do that. Number two is we all have blind spots. You can write that in your notes. We all have blind spots. Psalms 19, 12 says, who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Here we have David even admitting a very, very tough subject, saying, listen, there's, there's even some areas in my life that maybe not necessarily secret because of me or anything. I'm meant to keep them a secret. But if we live life, and sometimes we live life and do life long enough, there's some things we forget. You know, I've slept since yesterday, obviously, and there's some things I've even forgot that happened this weekend. There's some things that happen in our life that might be hidden or secret. And we say, even David said, listen, even those things, God, will you reveal those things to me? Or maybe have someone bring those, those hidden secrets, those hidden sins out, and bring them to revelation so we can deal with them. Lord, that's, that's, my, that's a tough prayer to say, isn't it, folks? I'm going to say, God, even go down to the depths of my soul, the depths of my heart, even those that are hidden that I might not even know about, remember, or even, even think, God, bring those to revelations. And, and you guys know the phrase, love is blind, right? I don't know if you guys, and don't raise any hands, or maybe you might be sitting next to somebody, I don't, don't point them out, but you ever had that in any friendships, those growing up, and I've had many, and even as a youth pastor, I've seen so many young people that are living this and going, God, do you not see what you're into? But I think that, the, the, I guess the philosophy is love is blind, and when you're in the middle of something, there's a lot you don't see, right? You almost want to shake them, you know, in, 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 adult shaking syndrome. You just want to shake them to you like, are you, do you understand what you're in? I mean, you can see heartache like weeks or days down the road. And, of course, they're in the middle of a situation, and they're just like, no, nah, man, I'm totally in love. This is awesome. You're thinking, you just don't see it. And, it, and that's, that's the same principle. Sometimes we're in the middle of that. We just, there's some things we just don't see, and we say, God, even those hidden ones, maybe those things we refuse to see or just can't see, God, bring those to revelation. I, want, I, I need to deal with that. You guys with me say amen. We all have blind spots. We need somebody to bring those out. Number three, another reason why is so we can become godly, mature Christians. This is, this is where I'm getting to my favorite part. Because this is what I, when I envision LFA, when I envision a spiritual, supernatural community, is this right here, and we're getting to it, is so that we can become a godly, mature Christian. That, that's what we're about. Colossians 1 28 and 29. I want you to read this with me. It says, We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, 
so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. Verse 29, to this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. Here we have an example that Paul gives us, and, and, and he's using actually a, a sports analogy or a sports term when he says, when he says that, that, that to all ends I struggle, I labor. That means I play until the whistle blows. I'm giving it everything I have until the very end. I'm putting every ounce of my energy that comes from God, because he even says it's his energy, it's his authority, it's, it's he is the one who's giving it to me. So I, I do it with all my strength, with all my ability. But here's, here's the practical side of it. You're probably saying, man, that's great. What a great word. What does this mean for me today? This is what Paul is saying. He says, it, we, we have to be able to hear and listen to other people if we're going to grow. You guys catch me on that? We have to be willing to listen, hear other people if we're going to grow. That right there qualifies the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, the Sunday school teachers, those right there. Automatically, that qualifies those. And I'm not, I'm not here to, to stand in front of you and say, I need qualification. That's not what I'm saying. But right there, it qualifies automatically what church is all about, folks. It's that right there. We have to be willing to listen to other people. Even, But let's bring this down to the practical side of it. Even friends, acquaintances, some of those that you can trust as your accountability, you have to be willing to listen to them if we're going to grow. That's where the friction happens. You guys still with me on that? When that friction happens, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We talked about this already in loving one another. When it, when it, do we care enough to confront? When we have to do that tough, have that, conver that tough conversation with... That, that this is part of it right here, guys. We've got to be able to listen, open up our hearts and our minds saying, okay, I want to listen. This might hurt, but i got to listen to you because i got to have that friction in my life if I'm going to grow as a Christian. I have those. i got to have those because my prayer as a pastor is I'm not happy. I tell you guys all the time, I want to live uncomfortable because I know if that friction is happening in my life, that means there's growth happening in Edgar. That's my prayer. I'm not happy where Edgar is at right now. And I, and I mean that sincerely. I'm not happy where I'm at because I know there's more out there that God wants to reveal to me. And if I know that friction is happening in my life through prayer, through reading God's word, as uncomfortable as that is sometimes. Having those tough conversations, having those people pour into my life and I trust them enough to listen and say, okay, what do you have for me to say? Well, here's what I have to say. Here's what the Lord says. Here's the word of God. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Folks, that's what it's all about. Are you willing to listen to those people so that we can grow? You guys still with me? Say amen. amen. That's what it's all about right there, folks, is so we can become a mature Christian. Number four. Well, let me, let me, let me go back to that, guys. because in, in, in this scripture right here, it says proclaim. That's evangelism. Teaching, discipleship, admonishing, correcting. That's, that's the qualification there as far as why we do what we do. Number four. Now I'm going number four. It cultivates a deep, loving Relationships that cultivates deep, loving relationships in your notes. Again, we're getting to what I've been trying to get to in the message here, and this is the means to the end, but this is a beautiful expression of this type of love. To me, this is what sets up what, a, what I envision a, our church, a church to be, is this right here. Out of 1 Thessalonians 2, 7 and, uh, and, 7 and 8, I want, you, I want to read this to you says, but we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel, but our lives. Did you catch that? That's what we just talked about in that last point. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Because you had become so dear to us. Folks, that's a picture of a supernatural community. That's church. That's what it should be right there. This is where people who love you will speak into you. Here, this, to, like I said to you, Gorg, that, that's a picture of a loving church. And here's the misconceptions sometimes we get. And, and I love to hear this. When I, have, when I have some friends of mine come in or different visitors or when I, when I make contacts and phone calls on guests who we have throughout the church, I love to hear them say, man, what a loving church you have. What a friendly church you have. I, I must have been greeted and hugged. Uh, or, or just looked at or had my handshake at least 15 times. That's great. Isn't it, church? Can we say that's an awesome thing? We are a loving, friendly church. That's great. Here's the other side of it that I, I, this is my goal as a pastor, to be very transparent. Honestly, to me, a picture of a loving church is, wow, those people really love each other that much that they're willing to speak life into each other. 
Hello? That's the goal I have as a pastor. I love, I, I, and listen, that's awesome. I mean, the, it's awesome to have a friendly church. It's awesome to have that church that just, you know, I mean, we, we, it's, it's, it's great. But to me, the picture of what a great church you have, what a loving church you have, and some, when somebody can sit back and say, man, you guys truly just go out of your way to truly to speak life into each other. That doesn't happen very often. Folks, that's supernatural community. When we get to a point where we can speak life, not death, into each other, to encourage one another, to admonish one another, that's loving one another right there, folks. It's not the touchy-feely Holy Ghost goosebumps that you get saying, oh, they hugged. That's great. No, loving one another is when we can actually get to a point where we can speak life into one another. Folks, that's a loving, supernatural community. You guys sit with me and say amen. That's what it's all about right there. So there's the why. I gave you the why, now let's go to the how, because here's the practical side of it. The practical side of how to admonish one another. I go back to our text. So if you have your text right there in front of you, go back to it. We're going to go back to Romans chapter 15, verse 14. And let me read it again. And it goes like this. Now, I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, able also to admonish one another. So here's the practical side of it. Here's you're saying, okay, Edgar, that's, I mean, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm catching the message, but what can I do even today? What can I do right now to start this supernatural community of admonishing one another? Number one of this, guys, have a life full of goodness. Right there in Romans, it said it. Have a life full of goodness. What does that mean for us, that we need to be just good people? No, that's not what it means. It means you got to have your life in order before you go talk to someone else about theirs. Hello? Have your life in order before you go to talk to someone else about theirs. That's what's having a, that's when Paul is trying to tell us in the book of Romans to be, to have a life full of goodness is that right there. A life full of God. That where you're so full of God himself that you have no other choice to go and admonish and to love and to care for one another within the supernatural community. That's what it means. But here's what the world's kind of twisted and turned it around. Because if, if you practice that, and you might already run into this, if you have, you might amen, you can amen me a little bit louder because I've run into this. But if you try this, even within a supernatural community of the church or even in the world, if you try to bring admonishment to some other, the, the phrase you get back is this, who are you to judge? You, you guys ever get that one? If you haven't, then you really haven't done anything yet because I'm telling you, you're going to get it. In this world, even within the church, uh, I, and listen, I've been guilty of saying that. I've been honest with you. I didn't have a right to say it, but I've used it. Well, who are you to judge? And the, and the scripture, more time than not, that gets thrown back into the face is this right here. Matthew 7, 3 and 5. And I'll read it to you because I want to walk, walk you guys through this. And we're going to give you the real meaning behind what this is supposed to be about. This is admonishing right here. Matthew 7, 3 and 5. And I start with verse 3. It says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? You guys are with me on that? We've seen that before. What about that log? What about that big piece of woods in yours? Before you come to me, get that thing out of your eye. You guys ever seen that? Well, that's the, who are you to judge? You guys ever, I'm sure you heard it. Well, that's what that's saying right there. Verse 4, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? So what's that saying right there is, listen, get your life straight, brother, sister. Get your life straight. That's what it's saying. But here's the other side of that. Here is the world will stop there and saying, did you know the Bible? You go to church is saying you got to get the junk. You got to get your junk before you go to mine. But here's the other part, guys. No one ever finishes the other side of that scripture verse because there's more to it. Here's the other side of it. And then verse five, it says, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye. OK, we established that. Here's the other side of that. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. That's the other side of it. We fail and the world fails to talk about. See, Matthew, when Matthew was writing this, he was writing this with the assumption that we are going to do both. We're going to take the big log out of our eye. And we're going to take that out. But at the same time, Matthew's saying, listen, I'm under your assumption. If you do that, you've got to finish the job. You have to go to your brothers and take that speck out. It says, then you must, then you will. You got to sit with me. Say amen. That's the other side of it, folks. I know it's getting, it's getting uncomfortable because the gospel is saying that means I have to. If we're going to finish up, we're going to get our lives straight. There's a reason for it because we can come to somebody or go to somebody and say, listen, here's the situation. Here's, here's the gospel. Here's the word. Here's what's going on. 
I know because I just lived this myself. See the folks, see the victory in that church? I just went through this. I just experienced this. God just changed my life. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you the how. Let me, let me just share with you exactly because I've just been through it. That's what Matthew envisioned when he wrote that. And the prophets were taking that log out of your eyes with Matthew saying, listen, then you will, then you must, you have to go to your brother and take the speck out. That's the other side of it. The directive is still there. Guys, you, you still with me, church? Number two, have a life filled with knowledge. Have a life filled with knowledge. Plain and simple, be full of the word of God. I can't be more plainer than that. It's saying right there, folks, be full of the word of God. And that can't come just by listening to a preacher 20 minutes every Sunday, guys. Thank you. That means we have to get into God's word, folks. Can't just depend on the preacher to do it. It's all of us. Even this preacher, besides the study time and reading God's word for study for sermon, I've got to get into God. I've got to grow. There's the friction, folks. I just talked about that. That's where the friction happens. If you want to grow spiritually, folks, you can't depend on people to be spoon feeding your entire life. But, and I, I know that hurts. People don't like to hear that. But the reality is I don't want to be spoon fed. I want to grow. I can't depend on somebody just saying, here you go. Edgar. Okay, go pastor a church. No, that what God's saying, listen, Edgar, if you're going to grow, you got to go. You got to read. You got to get into it. I don't care if it hurts you. I don't care if this offends you. I'm just saying, Edgar, you've got to get into my word and grow. Because if you're going to lead a church, you, gotta, you, gotta, you can't take them somewhere that you're not. You've got to get there. The only way to get there is I dig into the light, the lamp, the word of God. Folks, that's where it's at right there. So listen, if you're going to go and take that speck out, don't go with just assumptions. Don't go just with opinions. Go with concrete word of God. Guys, are you still with me? That's where it's at right there. It, 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 this is as practical as it gets here today, church. Have a, have a life filled with knowledge. And here's, here's the saying. I just said a while ago. Don't share your opinion. Don't share your opinions on scripture because that's, that's not the correct way of doing it. If you're going to do it, if, if we're going to practice admonishing one another, don't go with opinions. Dig into the word of God. What is God's word truly saying at this time? Let me, you know how you do that? Share the absolutes of scripture. That's how you do it. Share the absolutes of scripture. Because I'm telling you, the word of God is the absolute word of God. Folks, are you still with me today? That's when you share the word of God, not opinion. You're sharing the absolutes of scripture. That's what it's all about. Can I get even more practical with you guys? If you have your pen Write these things down. I got some. Let me give you some examples. Very clear, black and white, about salvation. If you want a true blue, actual, here's a concrete. This is the why. Why salvation? Acts twenty and twenty one. Here you go. Acts twenty twenty one. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see any other way to interpret that? That means everybody, folks, we all have sinned. We all have fallen short of the glory of God, which means we all have to come to repentance in order to enter heaven. That's sin right there. It's addressing the issue of sin. And we're not scared to use that word here in this church. That's exactly what he's talking about. There's your concrete absolute in Scripture. Salvation. Boom. There you go. So if you ever want to share with somebody, guys, share the absolutes. Next, false doctrine. I won't have time to read all these to you, but I'll just give you the references. If you want to talk to somebody, absolutes in scripture when it comes to false doctrine and false teaching today. And I promise you, folks, it's going to happen. It's only going to get worse these next few weeks and few months. That soon. Yes, that soon. You want to share with somebody about that and dig in the word yourself? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Drop these things. I mean, go to these and do the research, guys, a little bit later. I wish I had time to read these and really get into this. But these are absolutes. More. If you want to talk about disunity and personal relationships, Philippians 4. Philippians 4, if you want to talk about it, and some of you might have to have these conversations. I'm trying to give you guys some practical information here today because these are things that are hitting our, us as a church, us as a community, us as people. These are real life issues. Can you say amen? And I'm giving you now some scriptures so that when you have these, I'm speaking in faith, 
when you have these conversations, when you admonish one another, you'll know what to talk about. You have scriptures. You have the research. Next, if you want to talk to somebody about immoral behavior, you can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. That's a tough conversation that needs to be said. You say amen? Another one, how to relate to the opposite sex both before and after marriage, 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. Another absolute in scripture, you need to speak to somebody about materialism and money, 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. I, I, I can go on and on, guys, giving you so many absolutes. I just want to give you a few, a few examples of of some absolutes in scripture that if we're going to admonish one another in this supernatural community, which we have a great one here, it needs to be better. Amen. And this can't come just from here. Admonishing doesn't just come from the pulpit, folks. Are you with me on that? I don't know how else to say that. You're saying, man, you're preaching yourself out of a job. Exactly. I did say it that way. Because it's not just on the pastor. You're saying, well, I'm just going to sit back at the pastor. I mean, that's his job anyway. That's what we pay him for. Let, let him say it. Really? Do you not read the same Bible I'm reading? Because this goes, admonishing goes to all of us, folks. If we are a practicing supernatural community, folks, I can't stress that enough. This right here is happening. But you've got to get into prayer. You've got to get into God's word. You can't go with opinion. But folks, this is, that's, this, is, this is what we call a healthy church. An unhealthy church is those churches. And, and listen, a healthy church has nothing to do with sizes. Because I can tell you right now, some mega churches right now, they're not healthy. I don't care if they're running 10,000 people. It's not healthy. 400, 500, 1,000. Just a church, just because they're large guys doesn't make them healthy. A healthy church is a church that is a practicing and, and a, a life-giving supernatural community where people are, yes, they love each other, they're friendly, but we love each other so much, guys, that we're willing to admonish one another in love. That's loving one another, folks. I'm telling you, this is not preached enough because it's not popular. This is how you grow churches. Listen, I mean, listen, I, I promise you, I've got friends of mine think I'm crazy for sharing this. Man, you sure are not going to grow your church that way. Good luck. I'm like, I'm not about growing crowds, man. I'm all about growing a community of believers that are going to be there. They're going to make an impact in the world, a very positive impact that loves one another. Folks, that's what it's all about. We're going to grow. No doubt about it. We're going to continue to grow. We're going to do it through the word of God. We're going to do it through absolutes of scripture. Not going to water it down. Not going to get all popular. Not going to make you feel all good inside. If you feel good inside, that's great. Man, I love you. But folks, it takes friction if we're going to grow. I want to pastor a church that's supernaturally growing. Not just in numbers, but you guys are maturing in the word of God. That's what it's all about. Folks, you stuck with me? That's not popular preaching, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't have to say that. I love you guys that much. And when I say I love you that much, I sincerely mean I'm looking all of you on your little bitty eyeballs there. Some of you guys, I can't see the whites of them. Okay, okay there you, you can wake up now. <laughs> just joking. I love you guys that much. So much so that this is admonishing. It's preaching the truth. Because I know that I have to live that myself. I want you guys to be able to be proud of a pastor who is growing himself. Experiencing that friction himself. That comes out of a session of reading God's word going, golly, my back hurts. Because, man, I just got beat up. I want you guys to know that. That's to me supernatural community. Church, I really do love you. That's what it is. And I close with this. Our baptismal candidates, if you guys want to make your, your way up to where you need to be, our worship team is about to move out of their seats as well. If you're here today and maybe you thought about being baptized, can I throw that in really quick? It's not too late. You can go home wet. Anyway, it's raining outside anyway, so you're going to be wet anyway, right? So if you guys want to get baptized, we can, we'll, we'll take the walk-ups any day, okay? Let me close with one more point, guys. This is it right here. I want you all eyes up here. I know some are moving. We got a lot of action going on. All eyes up here really quick, guys. This is where this I'm going to close with this. The third how, as far as how can you admonish one another? Number one is what, guys? Have a life full of what? Goodness. So first of all, have a life full of goodness. That means you've got to be full of God. 
Have, hey, love God so much to where you are consumed by the Holy Spirit, consumed by God himself. That you have no other choice but to love people. Amen, church? So have a life full of goodness. Number two is this. Have a life filled with knowledge. Get so full of the word of God. And how do you do that, guys? Get in the word of God yourself. Get in the word of God yourself. Get discipled. Get into Sunday school. Get into small groups. Get in those groups where the friction's happening and the word of God is happening and you're being sharpened. Amen, church? That's what it's all about. Number three, and I close with this one right here, guys, is have a heart filled with love. Have a heart filled with love. I chose this point as the last one because if you're going to do all that and we're going to admonish one another, it has to be done through love. Because see, someone can hear what I just said right now and you're going to think, I'm just going to totally just... I'm going to go black. I got somebody in mind right now. I need to go admonish right now. That's not what it's about. That's not love, folks. The world's got other words for that. We just call it, that's just plain mean. All right? There's, there's other churches full of that already. I don't, I, we ain't about that. Okay? That's not, that's not admonishing. Every time you seek the word of God, guys, every time. You can go through, you can go through all the Pauline epistles. You can go through the gospels. And every time, even in Matthew, I just read it. Every time when you see admonishment happen, guys, it's happening through love. Amen, church? That's where it's all about right there. Will you stand your feet with me today? Hallelujah. Woo! This is a shot message, wasn't it? You don't have to lie, okay? You don't have to lie. Hey, listen, folks, this is a good word. I hope you're listening. This is a good word because this is how this church is going to continue to get healthy, to get strong. Because I'm telling you, folks, it's only going to get harder these next few weeks to come. It's only going to get harder. I failed to mention one thing a while ago, but this is part of what I'm talking about right now. Um, when, you, when you exit these doors, guys, we've got, you're saying it doesn't have to do with the gospel, but it does, trust me, okay? When you exit these doors, there's, if you haven't signed up to vote, guys, get signed up, register to vote. We have a voter registration table sitting right outside those doors. You're saying, I thought the church, that's supposed to get political. Where's the, where's the separation of church and state? Folks, this is what this is all about right here. I'm not going to endorse any kind of political candidate. That's not what I'm about today. I'm just saying, guys, if you haven't registered to vote, what are you waiting on? Because that is a, that's an honor, that's a privilege that we as Christians, we need to be involved in. We've got to be involved in. I'm telling you, I can't else but stress that, folks. That right there is, that is scriptural. That is a supernatural committee. That's using a right, a God-given right. We don't need some president to tell you we need to vote. I'm telling you, God's given us this right for us to make that choice, to be able to vote according to the word of God. That's what I'm talking about right there. Not so much, but what I, can I get out of this? What, can it, what candidate is going to benefit, benefit me the most? Because I'm telling you, there's some candidates out there that will benefit you probably more financially. There's some candidates out there that's going to benefit you more in your wallet. If that's what you're all about, then you can answer to God later on that, okay? Yeah, I did say it. Because to me, guys, it's all about voting the Word of God. If you want to know who I back, there's my, I'm going to back it right there. I will say that publicly. I, 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 try to, I, I don't try, I do. Try to find those candidates that line up the most with the Word of God. That's just it. You want to know who I voted for? There you go. I'm going to do it again this coming election. The reason I'm stressing that is because we've only got six more days, and that's it. You got until October the 6th, next Saturday, and you can't register anymore this year. You've, let, you've lost out. You've missed out to have a voice. And folks, this church, the church needs to wake up and have a voice. The church has to. Amen, church? I guess the directive is that simple, guys. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to wake up when it's too late? And I'm saying, and I, the reason I'm saying all that because it does tie in what I just said, guys. There's going to be a lot of false teaching, a lot of false prophets, a lot of false doctrines, a lot of stuff flying around out there. Many candidates, some candidates are even going to cite the word of God. They're going to do it wrong. But if you're not full of the goodness, God, and if you're not full of knowledge, the word, you're going to get sucked right into it every time. That's why I tell people, don't depend on the 25 minutes you get from your pastor, because you'll be sunk. I can't give it all to you in, in 25, 30 minutes. It, it's impossible. You've got to get into the Word. You've got to pray. Get that friction, guys. What is the Word of God saying today? 
What's it saying to you? What's it saying to us as a church? What's it saying to us as a country? Because God is speaking today. Because the first time I say, well, God's not speaking anymore. Are you kidding me? Then you haven't listened. Because it could be a whisper. If you're the one doing all the flapping all the time, guys, when are you going to hear God whisper? Because sometimes he whispers so you guys can be quiet enough to hear him speak. Maybe right now it's one of those moments of God just to whisper something to you today. Now, for me, guys, I speak it loud because I can't hear much anymore, okay? I have that selective hearing. As long as Stephanie's talking, I can't hear it, okay? Yeah, so she's, she's our children's pastor, so I can get away with that right now. But seriously, folks, God's speaking even to you today. Because I'm telling you, this is an incredible... You guys get to... I want to remind you this. You guys get to be a part of this supernatural community. And this is a beautiful thing. It really is. This church is a beautiful church. Beautiful church. I'm not talking about the building. You guys are going to make this church beautiful. You make it beautiful. Some of you guys are weird. That's okay. I think that's what makes this church even more beautiful. I pray God gets more weirdos in here. Okay? That will make you guys look good. (laughs) But church, I love you guys. Love you so much. Can't say that enough. Love you that much that I want to see us grow. That I want to challenge us guys to, to become that spiritually mature Christian that will stand when the enemy comes against us. Because he's coming. Even stronger than he ever has before. He's coming. Are you ready, folks? The reason I had you guys stand is we just want us to have a time of prayer and then we're going to have some baptisms. What a way to close today. Amen. But I want to pray for you. I'm not even going to ask for your head bowed. I just, I just want us to pray. I want us to seek the Holy Spirit and what he has to say to us. Because God wants to speak right now. I'm just going to say a prayer over you guys. If you're here today and you're hurting, this is your chance right now to receive from God. You're hurting. You need healing. Or maybe today you're thinking, I, I, I never even experienced that love ever in my life. Can I tell you, you can receive that today. If you've never received the love of God, you can do that right now by simply saying, I receive it. God, I'm a sinner. I'm a failure. I failed even today, but God, I am here right now saying that I need you. And maybe you never have said those words before. Can I tell you, it's that simple. It's that simple. Just open up your heart with your mouth saying, God, I need you. I ask you to my heart, save me. It's that simple, folks. I'm telling you, you can do that today. Or maybe you haven't done it in a long time you need to come back. Or maybe today you're saying, I just need to hear the voice of God. Or maybe the issue today is I need to practice admonishing one another. Because that's true love. Amen, church? If we're a supernatural community that truly loves one another, I'm releasing you right now, church. Let's admonish one another. Let's love one another. Will you guys pray with me right now? I invite you right now to close your eyes and let's just pray together. Father in heaven, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, thank you for your word. As uncomfortable as it is to read it, as uncomfortable as it is sometimes even to preach it, Lord. I know today wasn't a popular word, Lord God, but it is popular with you because you love this word. You died for this word, Jesus. Father, we proclaim this word today, Lord God. It is a powerful word, Lord. And the message is plain and simple and it's very clear today, God. You want us to be full of goodness. That means full of God, to full of your power, full of your spirit. That's a directive, God. That's what you're saying to us today is to be full of you, to be filled with you here today, God. Filled with goodness, that's our prayer. If there's some here today that need to be filled for the first time, or maybe uh, it's been a long time, and they're coming back to you today, God, then fill them up with your power. Fill them up with your presence, God. Fill them up with your goodness. The other side of that today, God, is maybe some of us today have been challenged to truly get in your word, Lord God, to be full of knowledge, not just from what we get from our Sunday school teachers or our pastors or evangelists or teachers. God, that's not what it's about. We've got to get into your word, God. We've got got to get into your word. And so, Father, maybe today the challenge is I'm going to read more. I'm going to study more. What is God's word speaking to me today? God, that's the message for me today. And thirdly, God, maybe today is, guys, we just need to be filled with love so that we can extend love to people. 
Today, God, I say love through me. Don't just love me, love through me. I want to be an extension of your love today, God. That's our prayer today. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your power. Thank you for an incredible time around this word today. Let it change our life so we can change the world. We ask this in your name. And everybody says, amen, amen. You guys don't leave. Be seated. We've only got four back. It's going to be awesome. What a way to celebrate. You guys may be seated. We've got some young people that are going to be baptized. And wow, they're all in the tank. All right. We're going to have, we, we, it's a group baptism here, guys. So we're going to, um, um, Andrew, take it away, bro. And uh, we'll close this way. God's doing some great stuff. We're seeing lives change literally on a weekly basis. And I've got three guys in the tank with me today. Um, and I'm going to introduce to you and uh, let them share their story, and then we'll baptize them. Uh, but I've got them in here together. These guys are friends, and uh, it's kind of this deal where God started working in one of them, and he invited another one of them, and uh, then he invited another one, and God just kind of domino affected. And uh, yeah. So I thought it'd be fitting to have us all here uh, together as uh, as we share this first guy I'm going to baptize today. His name's Donald, and uh, I've asked Donald just to share briefly about what God's been doing in his life. Um, I wasn't on the right path and wasn't doing good. I came to church just to hang out with my friends, and then I got talked into going to church camp. I didn't want to go, and then I liked it actually. I got saved. Since then, I've been doing good. <laughs> um, Donald, you want to live for God for the rest of your life, huh? Yes. Yeah, he's changed you, huh? It's awesome. All right. On your public profession of faith, I'm now going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He walked up here and he goes, man, I'm short. <laughs> I think this baptistry makes us all look short. All right. So no big deal. This is Casey, and uh, I've asked him to share too. Um, well, I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. You know, and Donald was like one of my best friends. And he asked me to come to church, and I think um, that was a masquerade the first time I came. And I didn't really like it. I just hung out with friends. His hair makes us all look short. <laughs> this is montage. Go ahead, share with the book. Uh, at first, I wasn't going on the right path. I was doing all sins and stuff. And uh, I think at church camp, I became saved, and God opened my heart up to Him. And ever since, He's been forgiving me of my addictions and all my sins, and led me straight to Him. And now I'm trying to do better. Saved you and you live with it, live for him for the rest of your life. Awesome. I'm gonna baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo. Can you beat church? Come on, come on. Now let's celebrate. Come on, let's give it to God right now, folks. Come on. Woo! Father, we love you. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Part of a supernatural community, church, is to get excited about a changed life. Amen, church? That's what it's all about. It's hard to contain emotions up here. This is incredible. I like seeing people proclaiming that. Kayla, congratulations to our Baptists. Thanks. Thank you guys for sharing your life with us today. Amen, church? May you guys go this, go bless, go encourage, 
Go full of the knowledge and goodness of God to change this world. Amen, church? We'll see you guys next week. Love you guys. There's a fire.